In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to manage and configure your access points on the controller. So first, go to Devices, and we'll be using Local Area AP Management, or LAPM, since all the APs will be in the local site or layer 2. So make sure that it's enabled. If not, you can click on the hyperlink and change it to Enable. Then click on the Enter button. Now first, we're going to be creating a template with all the settings that you'll want your APs to have. So click on Templates. Then here, you'll need to select the AP model that you want to create a template for. In this case, we'll select the EAP737 as an example. You can change the template name here to EAP737 so that it's easier to recognize. And then click on Apply. Now to configure the template, click on the pencil icon over here and you'll see the page where you can edit the template. For the default gateway, here you can set it as the IP of the default service zone. Then scroll down to the wireless settings, which looks similar to the AP's UI. For reference, the EAP737 has two radio cards, RF card A and B. For RF card A, we will use 11 GNN, and for the channel, we'll recommend you to select a static channel, for example, channel one. Then for channel width, we'll suggest to use 20 MHz to avoid congestion. Afterwards, enable band steering so that the devices which are capable to connect to the 5 GHz band can be steered to this band for faster connectivity and to avoid network congestion. Now click on Apply. Okay, so now we can continue and configure the VAPs or SSIDs that the staff and guests will connect to. So scroll down to VAP Configuration and click on the pencil icon here to configure your first SSID and we'll configure for staff first. So in the profile name, you can change it to for IPNet staff. And for service zone, select staff, and you'll see that the VLAN ID will also change automatically to the corresponding VLAN ID for this service zone. Then for SSID name, you can also change it to for IPNet staff. For staffs, you might want to hide their SSID, so here, you'll disable broadcast SSID. Then for receiving RSSI threshold, you can change it to negative 80 to make sure that all staffs who connect to this SSID must have a quality connection that meets this standard. As for the security settings, you can select WPA2 and set your passphrase, for example, 12345678. Of course, you'll want it to be a little more difficult than this. And for the group key update period, you can set it to one day and then click apply. Then you'll be redirected back to this page. So now we'll go on and create another SSID for guests. Click on Add VAP, and then the settings process will be similar to what we've just done. So click on the pencil icon, change the profile name to For IPNet Guest. Select Guest Service Zone and change the SSID name to For IPNet Guest. For guests, you'll want to broadcast the SSID so they will be able to see and connect to this network. So here you'll enable it. And for receiving RSSI threshold, you can also set it to negative 80. Then for security, select Open System so that they will see the login page for authentication instead of having to enter the SSID passphrase when they connect to the guest SSID. Then click Apply. So now you've configured the SSID for both staff and guest network for RF card A. Then you'll want to do the same for RF card B where you can select the 11AC standard. And for channel, we suggest you to check the non-DFS auto channel to avoid interference. So you'll see here that the only channels left here that are checked are the non-DFS channels. For channel width, you can leave it as 80 megahertz and also make sure that band steering is enabled. Then scroll down and apply these settings. So after you're done configuring RF card B, you'll also need to create the same SSIDs for staff and guests. So scroll down to VAP Configuration, click on the pencil icon, change the profile name to For IPNet Staff, select Staff Service Zone, change the SSID name to For IPNet Staff, disable Broadcast SSID, select WPA2 for security authentication, enter the passphrase, and then click Apply. Now do the same for guests. So you'll add a VAP, then edit it, change the profile name, select the corresponding service zone, and edit the SSID name to for IPNet guest. Make sure the rest of the settings are like in RF card A, then click Apply. Okay, so now we're done with the template for the EAP737. 
The next step would be to add APs to your controller to be managed under LAPM. So click on AP List, and then click on the Add button. Now you might have a lot of APs to be managed in your hotel, so for the Add method, you can select Find Multiple APs so that the controller can discover multiple APs and add them at the same time. Then for AP Type, select EAP737, and for Service Zone, we'll leave it as default for AP Management. The system will discover APs in factory default setting, or if you click on Manual, you can configure a specific IP range for the APs. Then click on the Scan Now button. It may take a while for the system to discover all the APs, and the page will refresh several times to update the current progress. As you can see now, it's scanning and here it says, Discovery is in progress, with the number of APs found so far. During this time, be sure not to close or stop the page. Then once the scanning is done, you'll see that the button here is changed back to Scan Now. And the wording here will be changed to Last Discovery and the time that the APs were discovered. So here you see that the system has discovered one EAP737, which initially had the IP address 192.168.1.1 by default. But after discovery, its IP address is changed to the assigned IP address for AP management in default service zone, which is 192.168.10.1 by default. We'll talk about this in more detail later. And now, you can change the AP name to EAP737, the template selected here is the one we've just created. And for channel, just leave it in default as it is. Now check the AP and then click on the Add button so that it can be managed and with the template settings applied. So now in the AP list, you'll see the added AP. You can see that the status here is configuring, which means that the template is still in the process of being applied to the AP. So on the top here, you can select the refresh interval to be 10 seconds so you don't have to manually refresh to see the latest status. Then just wait for it to refresh. And when it's done, you'll see the status change to online. You can disable the refresh setting. And you can also see that the IP address and service zone, VLAN ID, SSID, the status is online with the RF cards enabled. Here's the MAC address of the AP and the channel for both cards. And that's it for configuring your APs and adding it to the controller to be managed. But before we end this video, I want to clarify about managing APs in the default service zone. This is the part just now where you saw that the IP address of the AP is changed to the IP address for AP management. So go to System, click on Service Zones, and enter the default service zone. This is the service zone that is used to manage the APs. Now scroll down to Assigned IP Address for AP Management, and here you'll see the IP range. So basically, when you have successfully scanned and added the APs to be managed, its IP address will change to an IP address within the range that's set here. Okay, so that's all. Thank you.